The Waitakere Range is, is probably one of Auckland region's greatest treasures really. It's what they call a tanga. If we can preserve it, you know, in 50 to 100 years time, people can come out from an increasingly urbanised Auckland and experience, you know, basically a forest at their doorstep. Auckland's considered to be the weediest city in the world. We've got over 350 sort of formally recognised plants that are now weeds. These are plants that have come from overseas that started out often as just garden plants. You've got things like wild ginger used to be on the um, cover of the New Zealand Garden magazine in 1970 as something that everybody should be planting. So what happens is these garden escapes have got out into the bush and there's of all of these 350 odd there's about 10 or 12 that are really quite invasive. Things like wild ginger climbing asparagus. They'll smother the landscape, they'll climb up onto trees, they'll cover the ground to stop seedlings coming through. So they actually represent quite a severe change in the ecosystem so that after a period of time we don't actually have the regeneration of the natives coming through. What we end up getting is degraded bush and you can see it driving through on the roadsides. So the roadsides are a pretty obvious area of where you get a lot of weeds. But the really important side of it is those weeds that spread into the bush itself and start pushing out the native plants. It's this thing of suppressing the regeneration because a, a living forest has got to be able to keep regenerating new seedlings as the um, trees get older. If that stops, and you can see situations overseas where there's a vine called kudzu, which we don't have here luckily, and it will cover the whole face of all the trees. It'll just climb right over them and they can't photosynthesize and they die, they fall over and you end up just with barren areas where trees fall and the only thing on the ground is just weeds. Um, that's a pretty in extreme scenario, but we're looking at bits of that here. For the last decade or so, um, there's been a good focus program going on in the Waitakere Ranges, mostly being driven through Auckland Council, um, but also an increased number of community groups. My own trust that I work with, the Weed Free Trust, was established in 1998, so getting on to almost 20 years going. We've got a situation now where there are really good established community groups. We've got programs that have been running through from Waitakere City Council and Auckland Regional Council as we started the Super City. What we're beginning to find, unfortunately, is that there's a withdrawal of funding and some of that high level funding, which has been coming in on a regular basis, is starting to get pinched. They've got, you know, they've got lots of rationales for siphoning money out of environmental projects and into sort of more urban projects but that would be a great mistake. If we can't keep money coming in to support programs, then they'll disappear. There's a whole range of ways you can deal with any particular weed, and each weed's got its own sort of characteristics. And the qualities that weeds have is that they often have very sophisticated seed dispersal systems or they break up into small pieces like Tradescantia and a little single piece can get out there. The system you use has got to fit the weed. There's a balance, what we call an integrated approach, where you use some herbicide but you also use a range of other things like one of them's called cutting and pasting where instead of spraying stuff you just cut it off at the stem and paint a smaller amount of the herbicide on it and you get the same result. One of the things that I get the biggest buzz from is when I work with people who have bought a property and they sort of suddenly realise that it's not all good green. You know, it's green out here, but some of it's not desirable. And they actually start differentiating. They start to learn a little bit about the native plants. They also learn about those things which, you know, impinge upon them. But the main thing is they get out amongst the plants. They get out into the bush, they start pulling a few things out. They start assessing their surroundings in a different way. And I just think that um, it's a healthy exercise. In some ways it's, it's a problem that we're always going to have with us, so it's not a quick fix. But it's a constant process of engagement with the environment. The Waitakere Ranges is unique in that we have a, 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 an act, an act of parliament that protects this. This is a heritage area 
and it's a nationally recognised treasure in New Zealand. So we need to protect the Waitakere Ranges, not just for Auckland, but for the whole country. Um, it's one day it's going to be probably one of the most important pieces of bush that we have in this country.